we can hear you now. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, a senior moment, as they say. Trying to make a arrangement here with this microphone. It's okay. Yeah, can happen mm -hmm. to anyone, Guru Maharaj. Um, good. Let's go. Let's start. Oh, Magyana Timirandasya. Gyana Anjana Shalakaya. Chakshurun Militam Yena. Tasmai Shigurabe Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam. Stabitam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam. Dadati Swapadantikam. Vande ham Shri Guru Shri Yukta Parakamalam. Shri Guru Vaishnavangscha. Shri Rupam Sagrajatam. Sahagana Raghuna Tang Vitam Tang Sajivam. Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam. Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitangscha Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Itinami Namaste Saraswate Devi Dodavani Pracharine Yivishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Krishna Pripa Sindhubya Evacha Patiyam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namo Namaha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I, I was, I came across a nice mantra a verse which explains what, it, which gives a, a definition of japa. Do you want to hear this definition? Let's, let's see if I can remember. Mano madye stito mantra, mantra, <clears throat> mantra mana, mantra, no, yes, mantra mana. No, mantra madye stitam mana. Yes, um, mana mantram samayuktam etati japalakshanam. 
<laughs> this is uh, in the Hari Bhakti Vilasa, and it's also in uh, Dhyana Chandra Goswami's Archana Padati. Uh, <clears throat> so, mad Manomadye, in the mind, stita, situated, mantra. The, ma the mantra is situated in the mind. And um, mantra madye stitam manaha. And the mind is situated, standing, situated in the mantra. Man, uh, mana mantra samayuktam. The the conjoining samay, samayuktam uh, of the manas, the mind, and the mantra. This indeed is the lakshana, the characteristic of japa. <laughs> I thought that's pretty neat. So when the mind is in the mantra and the mantra is in the mind and they're both conjoined, that is japa. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's look at our, our song. Today is a, a well-known song. Of Srila Naratam Das Takpur. And before we go to today's song, last week's song, Radha Krishna Sevan Mui Jivane Marane, <clears throat> uh, this song was expressing Naratam's determination to worship Radha and Krishna during life and after death. <clears throat> Jivane Marane. Um, he will be anticipating, he's going to uh, see the pastimes of Radha and Krishna day and night, and he will see the places of these pastimes. Um, and he's anticipating being one of the manjaris, apparently. Uh, let's see, he says, Jaystan, Jaylila, Kore, Jugala, Kishore, Shakir, Sangini, Han, Tahe, Han, Bhor. Well, it says he will be in the Sangha, in the association. He will be a sangini, he will be an associate of the sati. So that could be another sati, but I think it's probably meaning a manjari. The manjaris assist the sakis. Mm, yeah. And, uh, and then he says specifically, and this would, I think, confirm that he sees himself as a manjari. Says, I forever serve the feet of Sri Rupa Manjari. <clears throat> Those lotus feet are my medicinal herbs and mantras. Tara Pada Pado Mora Mantra Maha Oshadi. And then he addresses Rati Manjari. Uh, begging for her mercy uh, and her shelter, her constant shelter. And then he addresses Rasa Manjari. So three Manjaris, Rupa, Rati, and Rasa Manjaris. He's um, referring to or addressing directly. <clears throat> Rasa Manjari, he asks to glance mercifully upon him and to always meditate on her lotus feet. Hmm. 
And finally, Vrindavane Nitya Nitya Jugala Vilas Prartana Koraye Sada Narutamadas, the couple's ongoing eternal pastimes in Vrindavan is always prayed for by Narutam. Prartana. So the whole collection of songs is called Prartana, Pra Arta, um, expressing expressing purpose, expressing um, intense uh, prayer. Okay, so so this is a song of resolve, and now we come to today's song, in which he's anticipating again, this time with more details, how he's going to serve the divine couple. Radha Krishna Pranamur Jugala Kishor Jiva Ne Marane Gati Aro Nahi Mor. Um, the divine couple, Shishi Radha and Krishna, is my life and soul. In life or death, I have no other refuge but them. So, pretty much like the first verse of the previous song. Uh, prana means life, uh, as well as air. It has this sense of life, air. Radha Krishna prana more. Mora, my, my prana, my life, consists in Radha Krishna, who are Yugala Kishora. Kishora is a young age, uh, and yuga double or double, so the two of them together. And then jivane marane gati aro nahimora. Um, in life and in death, aro nahi, there is not uh, more or there is not something else. Hmm. Mora gati, my my aim, my refuge, my shelter. Gati has a lot of um, kind of a lot of meanings. It can mean also a, a a way, a direction of going. <clears throat> um. So my gati is none other than Yugala Kishora, Radha Krishna, um, both in life and in death. Jivane Marane. Okay, then second verse. Kalendir Kule Keli Kadambera Vana Ratana Bedir Upar Bosabo Dujana. Okay, now he's describing what he's going to do specifically. In a forest of small Kadamba trees on the bank of the Yamuna. Kalandi is another name of the of Yamuna. And Kule, I guess, means on the bank, on the side. And Keli Kadamba. Kadamba is um, a kind of tree. And apparently, if I remember, if I understood right, um, Dina Bandhu Prabhu explained to us uh, in, uh, in Vrindavan that there are two kinds of Kadamba trees. So um, I suspect that the kind of Kadamba referred to here is different from the one I'm familiar with from Mayapur, which are quite fast growing, tall, tall trees. In any case, 
Uh, this is translated as a forest of small tendamba trees. Uh, vana, of course, means forest. Mm. Kali, we usually think of as meaning play. Uh -huh. But perhaps it indicates uh, being young, young kadamba trees. And then Ratana Bedhir Upar Bosavo Dujana. Um, the verb is Bosavo, I will seat, um, I will put on the seat, uh, on, uh, on the top, Upar or above, Ratana Bedi. So Ratana is stretched out, Ratna. Ratna meaning jewel. And Bedi is a platform in Sanskrit, Vedi with a V, Vedi. Ratana Vedir Upar, Bosavo Du Jana. Uh, the two persons, <laughs> the couple. Uh, and the apostrophe, I think, is replacing just I, Dui, Dui Jana. Okay, Shama Gori Ange Dibo Chua in parentheses, Chandanaraganda, Chamara Dulabo, Kobe Heri Mukachandra. So there's two verbs of future tense, dibo and dulabo. And there is a question word, when? I will anoint their dark and fear fair form with sandalwood paste scented with chua. Uh, and maybe someone can find out what is chua, chuya. Mm. Uh, so Debo means, uh, I guess, smearing with, like with sandalwood paste, anointing. Chandanir Ganda. Ganda is, uh, it's actually a mixture, I think, um, where Chandan, sandalwood is the main substance, and then there's other um, mm, aromas and things are mixed. And it's interesting, they're referred to Radha and Krishna as Shama Gori. <laughs> dark, li dark light, uh, ange, on the limbs, ange, of the light one and the dark one. I will smear Chandan Ganda. Chamara dulabo, I will wave a chamara or fan a chamara. And then kabe, heri mukha chandra, when uh, will I behold their moon like faces? <clears throat> so he's anticipating doing these services which are very intimate, very direct services. And uh, he anticipates the reward of simply seeing their moonlike faces. Hmm. Okay. Then, Ghatiya. Ghatiya Malatir Mala. Dibo dohar gole adhare tulia dibo karpura tambule. So more services, uh, stringing garlands <clears throat> of malati. So mala is a garland, malatir of ma malati flowers. Gatiya, having strung, I guess, having, yeah, strung together. Debo, I will, uh, I will give. 
Don Hargale on the necks of the two. Gale on the neck and Dohar of the two. And I will offer Tambula scented with camphor to their lotus mouths. So Adhare, uh, literally Adhara is, I believe, lower lip. But somehow it kind of, uh, it comes to mean both lips. Just lips in general. And uh, Tulia, let's see, what was that? Mm. Tulia Debo. I'm not sure Tulia Debo I will give. Um, Tulia. Hmm. Karpur Tambule. Karpur, of course, is camphor, and Tambula is Tambula. What is Tambula? Tambula is um, betel, betel nut mixed with some spices. It's a very common thing to see in India. You see people <laughs> chewing pan, having, you know, red, red mouth, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's it's interesting to me because it's kind of it's a kind of low class thing. <laughs> um, it's a mild intoxicant, apparently. That's why people do it. Um, but of course, with Krishna. Nothing is low class, right? <laughs> and so we uh, we don't imitate, and we don't take uh, the prasad of uh, tambula. I was uh, visiting years ago the Radha Vallabha Temple, in, and I was speaking with one of the one of the priests. Uh, very friendly, very spoke very good English. Uh, he offered me tambula from the deity. <laughs> I accepted it graciously. I don't remember that I ate it, um, but I, you know, when you're given something, it's nice to be polite. Um, Lalita Vishaka Adi Jatta Shaki Brinda. Agnyai Koribo Sheba Charanaravinda. <clears throat> so here the verb is karib, Koribo, I will do. What will he do? Agnyai, the order. Uh, um, or being ordered, uh, Koribo Seba, he will do the Seva of the feet, Charanaravinda the lotus feet. And he will do this uh, with all of the Saki, Saki Vrinda, Jata Saki Vrinda, um, Lalita Vishaka Adi, beginning with Lalita and Vishaka. Hmm. Agyai, okay, yes, uh, by, by the permission, by the order of all of these sakis, he will do this service. And finally, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dasar Anudasa Sheba Abhilasa Kore Narutama Dasa. So he's identifying himself in the last line. This is very, very typical um, literary convention of the time, uh, it's called, as I remember, the Banita. The Banita is the signature of the author. And so he's identifying himself as the servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. And 
Seva Abilas Kore, he's saying what he does, <clears throat> uh, what he's longing for is uh, Seva. Abilas uh, can mean longing. I do the longing, he's saying, or he does, he's speaking in the third person. Narottam Das um, does the longing for Seva, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so shall we try singing this? Why not? Let's first turn. Oh, uh, it says it says I cannot turn the live performance audio on. I had this problem before. Dharma Gupta, are you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj, but I really um, have no idea what could be the reason because, I mean, from my side, I can switch it on. And it might be some restrictions on your side, on, on the side of your Zoom application. Or microphone, maybe. Microphone settings. Uh, you're using the microphone from the MacBook or? No, I'm using an ex external microphone. Mm -hmm. I need to take a look into it, why this message comes. So till next Saturday, I will have more information. Can you turn it on from your side? I did. My, my, from my side is on. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe do you have a uh, latest update of the Zoom? Guru Maharaj, maybe do you know? I don't know. Okay. No, but we can discuss later. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, we could sing this in the way which I've heard it um, sometimes. So. <laughs> Radha Tishinda Prana Mohra Juga Lak Radha Krishna Prana Mohra Juga Lak Jivane Madane Gati Arona Mora Jivane Madane Gati Arona Himo Radha Kisha Pranamo Jugana Kisho Radha Kisha Pranamo Jugana Kisho Kalindi Kunde Kelly Adam Bera Pana Alin Bera Ule Kelly Adam Bera Pana Ratanaba Hira Upana Boshabodu Ratana Begira Pada Boshago Jan Radha Krishna Rana Jugana Kisho Radha Krishna 
Radha Krishna Pranam Yogana Kiso Radha Krishna Pranam Yogana Kiso Ganti Yam Malyati Mala Debo Dohar Gale Gati Yamal Lati Mala Debo Dohar Gale Adare to Nia Devi Arpura tambu le, adu re tu Radha Krishna Pranamo Gala Kisho Lalita Bhakta Adi Jata Shaki Brinda Lalita Bhakta Adi Jata Saki Prenda Agaya Kori O Sebi Charanara Vinda Agaya Kori O Seba Charanara Vinda Radha Krishna Pranamo Dasaranugasa Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dasaranugasa Seva Abhilasa Kore Narutama Dasa Seva Abhinasa Hare Narutama Dasa Radha Krishna Pranamo Jugana Kishore Radha Krishna Pranamo Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण गोविंद हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण बोल हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम हरे हो हरे हो हरे हो राधा कृष्ण प्राण मोर जुगा किशोर <clears throat> Makes one want to meet Narottam Das Thakur, and we can meet him through the story of his life, which we can read a little more of just now. So Narottam has arrived in Puri. From Vrindavan, he went to Ketri Gram. They had a festival. Now he's in Puri. He's just arrived. He's at the Singadvara. And at that time, Sri Gopinatha Charya and other devotees were also walking towards Singhadvara. Now, who is Gopinath Acharya? Uh, he is the, is it son-in-law of Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, Vasudev Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. He appears um, quite prominently in Chaitanya Charitamrita and and speaks with Mahaprabhu and speaks with Sarvabhoma and he speaks very strongly um, that uh, his, I think it's father-in-law, um, should recognize that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than the Supreme Personality of God. He is Bhagavan himself and uh, Saruvoma is doubtful, but Gopinath Acharya is not doubtful. So here he is, um, and he with other devotees are coming to uh, the, the temple. While walking, Sri Siki Mahiti said to Mangaraj, I cannot understand why my mind is leaping with joy. <laughs> and Kanai Kuntia says, I don't understand what 
is about to happen. But it is evident from the auspicious omens that something wonderful is awaiting us. And then Gopinath Acharya says to Vaninath, I think we are going to meet Narutam here very soon. So there's a lot of anticipation in Puri um, by the devotees to meet Narutam. And we met uh, last week the unnamed Brahmana on the way. Apparently he was headed north. And Narodham was headed south to Puri. Uh, the Brahman was coming from Puri. And they meet. And uh, the Brahman asks him, who are you? And he says, I'm Narodham. And the Brahman is very happy. And he's overjoyed. Oh, you. You are Narodham. I can't wait. I will be back. And then he sends his assist, or it's his son, I think, he sends him with Narottam to bring him the rest of the way to Puri. <clears throat> so now that Brahman's son approaches them, these uh, several devotees mentioned, and he informs them of Narottam's arrival. And then the rhetorical question, who can describe the devotee's jubilation upon receiving this news. Then the Brahman goes back to Narottam and then brings him and he helps him to identify the devotees who were approaching from a distance. We, we hear something like this also in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, when the devotees are from Bengal, and uh, as I remember, it's the king, Prataparudra, who is seeing them coming, and he is he is amazed and he is wondering who they are, and then he's being told who they are. Seeing all these, Narottam was overwhelmed with emotion. And as you might imagine, he immediately fell on the ground, bowing to their feet. And with tears streaming from his eyes, Gopinathacharya ran to greet Narottam and embraced him affectionately. So they're seeing Narottam for the first time, but, you know, we see someone for the first time, we might kind of be more restrained, more cautious. But they've heard so much about him. They, uh, yeah, you could say maybe they, they feel like they know Narottam already uh, just from hearing about him and they feel that he is one of them. So then Narottam calms down. They take him to the temple uh, to see Lord Jagannath. He, they enter through the Singhadvara, the Lion Gate, and Narottam first uh, offers obeisance to Nrsingadev. So apparently there's a Nrsingha deity um, inside the courtyard. Upon seeing Sri Jagannath along with Sri Balaram and Sri Subhadra sitting on their thrones, Narottam was filled with ecstatic emotions. Okay, Sri Padmalochan, Sri Jagannath Dev, benevolently, benevolently bestowed his mercy upon Narottam. The priest of Sri Jagannath understanding the mind of his Lord, brought Sri Jagannath garland and offered it to Narottam. 
<laughs> That's nice. Um, he's uh, suggesting that the the pujari, the priest, is very much in tune with the the Lord whom he worships, so he can understand. Oh, Lord Jagannath wants me to give his garland to. Uh, to Narottam. Narottam was unable to control his emotions and he wept incessantly. After pacifying Narottam, Gopinath Acharya took him to his house. There he instructed one experienced person to accompany Narottam to the samadhis of the departed associates of the Lord. Thereafter, he informed everyone of Narottam's arrival in Nilachala and brought varieties of Mahaprasadam from the temple for him. Yeah, so he arrives in Puri and he first meets the devotees and offers obeisance to the devotees. Then with the devotees, they go into the temple and have darshan of the deities, Jagannath, Sivatra, Baladev. Then Gopinath Acharya takes him home, but he immediately then has him go to uh, offer respects at the samadhis of the departed devotees. It doesn't, we don't get here a specific listing of these samadhis. So it might be interesting to know which uh, samadhis are there of which devotees which he would have offered obeisance to. But it just says in general. So uh, in any case, he offers respects to all of them. And then, after all of this, he receives Mahaprasadam. Um, yeah, one more paragraph. This is... Uh, the Narutam Vilas we've been reading from. Meanwhile, Narutam came across some persons who were talking to one another in this way. Quote, Alas, Nilachala has now become the abode of misery. All the associates of Sri Gorachandra are gradually departing from this world. Sri Gopinada Acharya and other great Vaishnavas have become lean and weak. And another devotee said, I recently visited Gopinath, I guess that means Tota Gopinath, or um, Kshirachor Gopinath, and I cannot describe what I saw there. Unable to bear the misery of separation from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Mamuk Goswami is practically lifeless. Sri Mamuk Goswami, um, he is lying emaciated in a lonely corner. I am afraid that he will die soon. Overhearing this conversation, Narutam's heart ached with misery. Yeah, so it must refer to Tot Tota Gopinath because next Narutam goes to have darshan at to Tota Gopinath. And there he's going to meet Sri Mamu Goswami. And that is what we will read next time Hare Krishna. <laughs> okay uh, I'm gonna take a one and a half minute break and um, you will see me after that if that's all right if you allow me 
Meanwhile, you can talk to each other to your heart's content. <laughs> okay, so... And welcome to all of you who have joined us since the beginning. And uh, nice to see you all. <laughs> um, I have a couple of things I wanted to speak about and share. And maybe you also have some things. Um, maybe we should start with the question I just got uh, from Marisha Sudevi. Yes, shall we take your question? Okay. Um, do you want to uh, explain your question or shall, shall I do it, Marisha? Mm. How do you like? <laughs> okay, I can. I, I can. Uh, um, I forgot a, a point in the mail, and so maybe I can uh, ergänzen. Ich kann es dann ergänzen. Okay. Wir müssen nur gucken, weil wir haben, glaube ich, keinen deutschen Dolmetscher heute, uh -oh. dass wir uh, das noch mal für Balawan. Krishna und Amrita Mandali noch mal auf Deutsch irgendwie und dass ich es auch richtig verstehe. Ja, yeah. so what should we do? Also we can we can speak in English and repeat in German maybe when it's possible. Oh, okay, I can try. <laughs> okay, um, so the question of Marisha Sudevi and her good husband and uh, the other devotees uh, is about this this uh, quite um, striking uh, pastime that we read about in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So es geht um uh, diese Geschichte in der Chaitanya Charitamrita über um, uh, junior Haridas, der junge Ach, Haridas. Junior, yeah. Ach, yeah, junior. Mm -hmm. uh, young Haridas. So, as probably most of you know, the story is that young Haridas went um, to to beg rice from Madhavi Devi. Um, and it was for the service of Lord Chaitanya. But uh, when Mahaprabhu was having the rice, he was asking, where is this rice from? Oh, it's from Madhavi Devi. And uh, how did we get it? Oh, um, Junior Haridas went and got it from her. Um and then Mahaprabhu is very shocking. He says, I don't want to see him anymore. Er sagt, uh, ich will den Junior Haridas nicht mehr sehen. Yeah, why not? What is the problem? Uh, the problem is that he is a sannyasi. And sannyasis must not have any dealings with women. Now, das Problem ist, er ist ein Sannyasi und Sannyasis sollen nichts mit uh, Frauen zu tun haben. And uh, the, the devotees try their best to soften Mahaprabhu say, well, you know, she's an older lady and he just went to beg some rice and it's not a big thing. Die Gottgeweihten versuchen Mahaprabhu zu besänftigen. 
indem sie sagen, dass es war ja, sie ist eine ältere Dame und er hat ja nur ein bisschen Reis <lacht> gebettelt und so. Aber, but Mahaprabhu is um, completely um, unrelenting. Mahaprabhu gibt nicht nach. And uh, eventually, uh, Junior Haridas leaves the company of devotees, and we are told he goes to the Triveni, uh, the place of the confluence of the uh, Ganga, Yamuna, and Saraswati, and there he drowns himself. Um, and uh, But the story doesn't end there. Uh, the last scene is that he appears as a Gandharva and he is singing because apparently he was in the life as Junior Haridas, also a very uh, beautiful singer. And as a Gandharva, he's singing for Lord Chaitanya. And then the report is given to Mahaprabhu, he has given up his life. And Mahaprabhu says, very good. And all of this is very shocking. Uh, yeah. Junior Haridas verlässt die uh, Gemeinschaft der Devotees, geht zu uh, der Zusammenfluss uh, uh, der Ganga, Jamuna, Saraswati, und dort gibt er seinen Körper auf. Er, äh, er trinkt. Und danach aber wird er erscheinen als Gandharva. Und sozusagen dient Chaitanya Mahaprabhu weiter. Es wird alles Mahaprabhu berichtet und er sagt, sehr gut. Ähm, es ist gut, dass er mh, seinen Körper aufgegeben hat. The question is, how should we first understand this? Um, one explanation I heard, which I found quite satisfying, it was explained uh, by my godbrother Vyasaki Prabhu, is that Mahaprabhu was teaching a lesson to the Uh, other sannyasis in Puri. And, um, but Mahaprabhu was junior to them. These were senior, these were some of them older sannyasis. And Mahaprabhu was, was observing, he was, he was noticing some uh, lax behavior. Uh, by some of the sannyasis, I guess, in Puri. But he felt he could not say anything because he was junior to them. And so he took the... Uh, uh, there's a saying of the mother uh, teaches the daughter-in-law through the daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so his, and so, um, in effect, um, Junior Haridas becomes an opfer. He becomes a a sacrifice for the purpose of uh, being a lesson for Mahaprabhu to teach the other sannyasis, because in the story uh, description it says. After that, then all of the associates were extremely cautious. And they were very, you know, oh, we have to be very careful. <laughs> uh, so, um, where did I stop the German translation? Weil wir können ähm, vielleicht, er hat so ein Exempel statuiert, könnte man vielleicht sagen. Ja. Yeah. Yeah. Also er hat sozusagen... Uh, Haridas musste 
als, auch als Beispiel gelten. Er hat ein, ein Beispiel an ihm gegeben, damit die, diese älteren Sanyasis ja. sich besser benehmen und, und ein bisschen, ja. ähm, genau. wie soll ich sagen, äh, nicht so lax, du hast gesagt lax, ne? Also so, ja, genau. Ja. Ah, okay. Ja, und ja. Ähm, hier ist vielleicht auch, äh, it, perhaps also in this uh, context, uh, there's one scholar, William Smith, he was a professor at uh, University of Stockholm, wrote a very interesting book um, about hey geography in northern India. Hey geography uh, is a um, biography of saints in which he analyzes uh, different tropes, different um, different patterns um, in describing the saints. There are patterns, there are typical ways of describing saints in North India. Uh, and one of the categories that he includes as a pattern, he calls hard bhakti. Hard bhakti. Also hard im Sinne von hart. Yeah. Genau. Ah, okay. Hard. Und nicht hart. Hartes ja. bhakti. Hartes, hartes bhakti. Okay. Yeah. And the idea is that there are many stories where the the principle of bhakti is highlighted, is represented through some action, some interaction, which involves some very radical ac action, typically some sort of violence. And it may be violence, it may be self-inflicted violence or something of that sort. Now, in the Christian tradition, you could say this is manifest in the whole history of martyrdom. Martyrdom, to be a martyr, uh, is... Martyr? Martyr. Martyr? No, ich weiß nicht. Dann habe ich es nicht verstanden, ja. A martyr is one who is um, killed by people for their faith. Mm -hmm. So there are many saints in the Christian tradition um, who, because of their, their faith, refused to, you know, give up their faith, and then those who were against them killed them. That person becomes a martyr. Okay. An opfer. An opfer. Ah, okay. Yeah, mm. so... Of course, mm -hmm. in Christianity, Jesus is the primordial op offer, and then so many of his followers, uh, St. Paul, and and uh, on and on, St. Anthony, whatever. So you see this hard bhakti <laughs> yeah. in yeah. Uh, other traditions. So that's what, one way of understanding it. Still, we might wonder, what was the fault of uh, Junior Haridas? And here, I th what I'm, my thought is that Krishnadas Kaviraj mm, he's he's writing what he has heard. He was not there personally. And what he has heard is invariably a summary of what happens. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know. There, there could be so many more details about the behavior of Junior Hari does. Where by the time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I don't want to see him again. It's very possible that this was the last straw. You know, uh -huh. maybe there uh -huh. were other things which he had done 
or which he had said. Um, and so Mahaprabhu says, has, Okay. Also der Tropfen, der das fast dann zum Überlaufen gebracht genau. hat, er hat so viele Dinge gemacht und I'm irgendwann just, war I mean, dann We can only speculate, of course. Yeah. We don't know, but because, because in general the Chaitanya Charitamrita is summarizing, uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. in so much. Yeah. Like uh, the conversation with um, Raman and Roy in South India, he says this went on for, I think it says three or four days. But what we read of that conversation, you can read easily in one hour. So what were they speaking three or four days? That's, we don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Da meldet sich Rasodadi Hari. Rasodadi Hari. Yes. Go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, I thought maybe that uh, you can tell uh, Marisha Sudevi about the same topic we spoke here. Maybe you remember when we have one Sangha with several devotees about this best time. Do you remember? Uh, maybe you, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you asked uh, this question. The same what she asked, and then um, devotees, one devotee actually, Shimanta Prabhu, he said because he looked, um, Junior Haridas looked at um, Madhavi Devi. But when we go into the details in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we can see that um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not referring to her. He's very subtle, and uh, the same question was asked to Shla Prabhupada. You know, why sannyasis go around and they beg from old ladies, all kinds of ladies, and so on. And Shla Prabhupada gave his insight into that. And he said there was one very young girl next to the Madhavi Devi, and he looked at her. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. at Madhavi Devi, at her. And therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but when uh, I went through Chaitanya Charitamrita many times, and I, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that very subtly, and, uh, you know, he didn't refer to Madhavi Devi at all. He said, one mm -hmm. who looks at a woman with, you know, mm -hmm. why Haridas Takuru, uh, Haridas Jr. would look, you know, with uh, with with uh, some lust to one old lady of eight years or seventy or something, <laughs> you know. So Prabhupada said there was one young, and he looked at her, uh -huh. and therefore Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very subtle, and he didn't. I mean, or Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was subtle; he didn't mention anything, but Prabhupada revealed. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I, I, I also heard that he was looking for a young lady, so and was the reason for this. Uh, yeah. yeah, but but the, my question uh, also when he died, also when ya, the young Haridas gave up his body, and then why said uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that is good because he is mm -hmm. also serving him after his death, or he's serving? Yes, his service continues. Okay, and his and and in this case. He's also, um, so to say, done the right thing according to, you know, Mahaprabhu's purpose, which was to make a lesson uh, mm. for all the renunciants. Mm. So, you know, he, he could have maybe just left Puri and wandered off somewhere else and wandered around as as a sadhu um you know he could have done a lot of things but no because he really took seriously uh, that what he had done was an offense he uh he went all the way and gave up his life Srila Prabhupada explains though that this is not to be imitated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it's another yuga, I think. So. <laughs> um. so is that uh, is that helpful? Yes, Where, yes. Right? Uh, Nimbaka does. My husband has the mm -hmm. idea that uh, the young Haridas was ego, and so he um, he had to. He was not, ach, wie soll jetzt kann ich es auf Deutsch? Also er war noch nicht so weit, dass er yeah. ihm folgen konnte. Also he was mm -hmm. not so clean, not so on the step to follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Maybe he was, he had to learn a lot. So Mahaprabhu sent him away, <laughs> go away. Now learn a lot of things and later maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was the, um, his idea. Yeah, also because we we talked about uh, Jadai and Ma, ne, Jagai and Madai, because uh -huh. Mahaprabhu was so merciful to them. Yeah. Because they, uh, uh, um, nicht because, obwohl, also they they were some bad. Oh, no. Also, also okay, uh, bad. Bad boys and, uh, mm. <laughs> but I think it was Nityananda. Nityananda yeah, was in that case, the, Yes. In that case, the, the 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 message is that even more merciful than Lord Chaitanya is mm -hmm. Nityananda, who um, saved Madai uh, from the wrath of Mahaprabhu. Yeah. 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 We we had we had the course uh, with uh, Damodha Priya we also are reading at the Bhagavad Gita and so mm -hmm. this question come up <laughs> and every everybody will ask his own guru yeah. for the an answer and uh, next week we put it together and so <laughs> uh. <laughs> so uh, yeah yes we are but we will see <laughs> what what was the summary uh, yes. Be. Yeah, thank you so much, Gumart. It was helpful. Okay. Good. Ramananda Gopal. Hare Krishna Guru Dev and all the Vaishnavas. Um, uh, it just came a thought in my mind because this pastime somehow or other seems very related with uh, what happened then to uh, Vishnu Chan Swami in the times of Srila Prabhupada and since you were present in this time uh, did you have any reflections or what was it kind of a how to say did you did the devotees in Europe knew about this or how you perceived this this incident with Vishnu Transform because it was quite a prominent figure I guess in Eastcon so mm. as I remember that was actually a bit before my time that he disappeared, but I, I don't remember the, the sequence. I never met uh, Vishnu John Swami myself because he was in America. I was in Europe, but yeah, the you know the story was kind of floating around, and to this day, I don't think we have the definitive uh, story of what happened, which is we are told by Vyasaki Prabhu that he, he is going to give us the definitive story in volume three. <laughs> There's a circus going on behind you. Um, he's going to give us the definitive history in volume three of his book. You know, he's written two, and um, I don't know if he's working on volume three or what. So I don't want to, you know, guess um, what happened. I'm I'm waiting for volume three of uh, it's called Damodar, Radha Damodar Vilas, I think is his book. Very nice memories of Vishnu Jan Swami and of, um, of 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 who else? Two other another devotee. Oh, Jayananda, yeah. Jainanda, yes. All right. Krishna, Krishna.
Okay, so um, looking at the time. Okay, I wanted to mm, kind of re revisit uh, a letter by Srila Prabhupada here, uh, which was printed in Madhavananda Prabhu's latest uh, Sri Krishna Katamrita Bindu. <laughs> this is issue number 582. <laughs> so Madhavananda producing this newsletter uh, since 582 ekadashis, apparently. Uh, that's more than 10 years, in any case. And he has a theme for each one. And the theme of this issue is bhakti and independent thinking. And Madhavananda wrote to me, a couple of days ago, asking me, could I please write a few words of appreciation of this particular issue because he knows that this subject is, I think he used the expression, dear to my heart. Well, maybe it is, but uh, I thought this is nice. Uh, a letter from Srila Prabhupada which speaks about this. And I won't read the whole letter, uh, but some excerpts. It's a letter to Karandar Prabhu, who at that time was, I believe he was the temple president in the Los Angeles temple. And the general theme of the letter, apparently Karandar had written to Srila Prabhupada asking and suggesting that they make some um, organizational centralization of the temples in, in America. And Prabhupada's answer, in short, is no. Forget it. Uh, we don't want that. And he's explaining why. And he says, the Krishna consciousness movement is for training men to be independently thoughtful and competent in all types of departments of knowledge. Let me move this down a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, all types of departments of knowledge and action, not for making bureaucracy. So this, this phrase, independently thoughtful, uh, is something which um, has always kind of resonated in me as something important. And uh, I've used it in a presentation I've given on education for an education conference. So then later he says in the same letter, um, let's see. Never mind, there may be botheration to register each center. Take tax certificate each, become separate corporations in each state. That will train men how to do these things. And they shall develop reliability and responsibility. That is the point. Each center should remain independent. 
So this phrase, they shall develop reliability and responsibility, that is the point. Uh, this also kind of jumps out at me. And uh, it seems to me that, of course, Prabhupada was teaching this not only in words, but also in action. And one of the ways he taught this by his action was to just send devotees here, there, to preach, to start centers. We may have talked about this, but in, on one occasion in India, Prabhupada and some of his disciples were traveling by train, and they had a short stop. I think it was just for a few minutes in one town, I forget which town, and um, I don't remember the details, but basically Prabhupada told two of his disciples who were traveling with him on the train, get your things and get out of the train and go here and preach, start a center. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> and they were surrendered souls, so they did it. <laughs> Um, okay, from the same letter, I suppose I could share this uh, on the screen. It might make it easier for our translators. Let's see. Uh, share. Okay, how's that? Okay, so over here on the right side, our leaders shall be careful not to kill the spirit of enthusiastic service. So now Prabhupada is speaking about management, um, how managers should be. Our leaders should be careful not to kill the spirit of enthusiastic service, which is individual and spontaneous and voluntary. Sometimes devotees who are in positions of management forget <laughs> this point. It is individual, it is spontaneous, it is voluntary. They should try always to generate some atmosphere of fresh challenge to the devotees so that they will agree enthusiastically to rise and meet it, to meet the challenge. That is the art of management, to draw out spontaneous, loving spirit of sacrificing some energy for Krishna. I think this um, two or three sentences really summarizes what is Krishna conscious management. Individual and spontaneous and voluntary. Um, so first he speaks negatively, don't kill the spirit. Uh, so devotees come, they have a spirit, they want to serve, don't kill it. Um, and that spirit is one of individuality and spontaneity and um, freely doing service, voluntary service. <clears throat> a little later, he says, there must be some tapasya. Mm. Um, and then strictly observing the regulative principles, Krishna conscious movement must be always a challenge, a great achievement to be gained by voluntary desire to do it, and that will keep it healthy. Hmm. So important. 
uh, okay, that's that was the letter to Karandar, and um, maybe a bit more. This is from a letter to Ridayananda Das, who's now Ridayananda Das Goswami. Um, yeah, introspection and extroversion. He says, I just highlighted this, but one who has developed introspection is as grave as the sea. Um, simply quoting verses like a parrot will not be very beneficial. One must apply. Jnanam vijnana sahitam. Jnana means to know the thing, and vijnana means to apply in practice, practical life. So we must know the vijnana, how to apply practically. And then, in, um, oh, that was a diff that was a lecture, sorry. Now to Hridai Nandamraj, you must all start study very scrutinizingly all of the books so that when the need arises, you can repeat in your own words their purport. So a nice point about reading the books. I find um, so many times, I just find, I hear about devotees being disturbed, about one thing or another. And then you sort of ask, well, what would, what do you think um, Shastra might say about that situation? And they have no idea. And the whole idea of reading Shastra is um, imbibing it so that one can apply it in one's life that's what we're that's what we're trying to do uh, and that we were just hearing a very nice lecture from um, his holiness bhakti vigyan goswami uh, on the subject of crises on the path of devotion he's giving a very nice analysis uh, of how we come to turning points. We come to points uh, where we need to make a decision. Will I go up or will I turn around and go back down? And uh, he's making this point very strongly that faith in guru uh, means hearing the guru who is teaching us uh, to, hear, to hear Shastra. Uh, Otherwise, it becomes a kind of sentimentality. Okay. Um, I'll stop sharing. Uh, good. Any thoughts about any of that before we look at the Purusha Sutta? No? Okay. Everyone's quiet. So, Purusha Sukta Ki Jai. We were reading the first mantra of the Purusha Sukta. Sahasra Shirsha Purusha Sahasra Sahasra Pata Sabumim Vishvato Vritva the Purusha has thousands of heads, thousands of eyes, and, and thousands of feet encompassing the universe. He rules or pervading the place. He, re, he sorry, he rules pervading the place that measures ten fingers. That's the translation we have here. Um, 
but let's look at some of the commentary because we we ended wondering what means 10 fingers. What is this 10 fingers all about? Mm. Mm. And uh, so I'm gonna jump over some of this commentary. Well, we may or may not get to that point, but uh, we can look at this passage. Yes. Because as I mentioned in, Ch in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 6, we get some echoes of the Purusha Sutta. But actually this is already uh, in Chapter 5. And uh, there is some discussion about this in the commentary. Uh, okay, here's here's what Sayana. Remember, Sayana was one of the commentators on the uh, on the Rig Veda, said to have lived between thirteen sixteen and. 1387, he says about the words dashangulam atyatishtat, he says, literally means that the Purusha is beyond, beyond the place that measures 10 fingers. Okay. <clears throat> So, what does that mean? He adds that the term dash angulam indicates that he, the Lord, pervades the universe by being outside as well. Okay, I think that's clear enough, but still, why ten fingers? According to him, the prefix ati in ati atishtat uh, verb stands for the principle of ati kramya going beyond. Um, okay, at atishtat. So, one way of understanding this could be simply um, emphasizing that the Lord is transcendental to the world as well as being in the world. And there's um, an English expression for this, panentheism. There's pantheism, which means basically the world, that is to say the cosmos, everything in the creation is, uh, we might say, coextensive with God. So there's no God outside of the creation, but God is present throughout the creation. That would be panentheism. But panentheism <laughs> adds a, a, a little prefix in the middle. Panentheism means God pervades the world, and God is beyond the world. Both are the case. So that's, of course, very much uh, the understanding that we have from our Shastras, from Bhagavad Gita, from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's, um, you could say very clearly that's the idea. Um, and so we find that idea in the first verse of the Purusha Sukta. Um, so when we say that we are, our tradition is based on the Veda, um, you know, you could ask sort of, what does that mean specifically? Well, one thing it means is um, 
the Purusha Sutta, this one particular hymn, is uh, it's like the seed of um, of the entire edifice. That's not a good. That's a mixing of metaphors. Uh, it's the it's the first brick. <laughs> uh, it's the foundation stone for a gr the great edifice, which is uh, the Vaishnava tradition that uh, builds up from there. Okay, um, here we are. The first half of the opening verse of Purusha Sutta corresponds to the second Tom two six sixteen, uh, which states te ne dum avritam vishvam im aditishtati. This world is pervaded by him. He rules twelve fingers beyond. <laughs> so the plot thickens. Now we don't have ten fingers. We have twelve fingers. Um, apparently, Vitasti is 12. Mm. Okay, and then Vishwanath Chakavarti Thakur has something to say about this, and that is to say, uh, presumably from his commentary to that, that verse in the Bhagavatam, because I don't think Vishwanath commented the Rig Veda. What does he say? He says, Tena Parameshvarena idam vishvam avritam yato adhi vishvasmat adikam vitastim vitasti pramanam desham vyapya tishtati iti adikya matram vivakshitam na pramanam tasya avirik Aparichinatvena pramanatvat. <laughs> That's clear. What does that mean? The world is enclosed by Parameshvara because he abides beyond the world while pervading an area. That is the measure of 12 fingers. Now we get these fingers again, and this time it's 12. <laughs> Only a superiority is intended to be expressed, not a measure, since he cannot be measured insofar as he is not delimited. So it seems that Vishwanath is saying, don't worry about 10 or 12 fingers. That's not the point. It's just a way of expressing uh, superiority. 10 be, you know, it, it may have been some sort of customary expression. Uh, if something is superior, it's 10 fingers more. Um, it could also be, come to think of it, okay, now I'm jumping straight into the pool of speculation, but here it goes. Uh, because uh, measures in uh, Vedic literature are often based on measures of the body. Uh, one aratni, for example, if I remember correctly, is the distance between the elbow and the tip of the fingers. Now, you and I are going to immediately say, wait a minute, my elbow to tip of fingers is going to be different from somebody else's elbow to tip of fingers. So how can that be a standard? Okay, would you like to know? Yes. So when a perf when a sacrifice is being performed in preparation for the sacrifice 
a lot of measuring goes on of the place of sacrifice. And the measuring is done on the basis of the body size of the yajamana, of the sponsor of the sacrifice. So the aratni of the sponsor, okay, they'll, you know, they'll take a string, the, the priests who are preparing the place of sacrifice, they'll take a string and they'll go up to the yajamana and they'll hold out your arm. We have to measure you. <laughs> and, and then they'll get the length and I guess they'll tie a knot in the string and then they'll go on, go about uh, measuring out everything. Am I right, Vrindapati? Is that how it's done? Please correct me. Guru Maharaj, I have to admit, that's the first time I've heard that. Oh. Yeah, because... Um, well, I said I'm jumping into the pool of speculation, so... <laughs> I I don't know. I haven't... I haven't uh, checked out Vedic Homa is, you know, most people do Puranic Homas and Yagyas these days. It's not really yeah. so many people trained in like a Soma Yagam or Shrota Homas or Alpasana Homas and things like that. So it doesn't happen so much. And unfortunately, so in, in this day and age, these yag Vedic Yagyas. That's right, of course. So now a lot of people are doing Pancharatrika Agama. So in Pancharatrika Agama, measurements are slightly different. Yeah. Uh, when you're talking about the Shangulam, I, I was it came to mind that measurements were even of the deity is done by looking at angulas. You know, yeah. when a deity is cast. Yeah, the proportions. The proportions are are there. Matsya Purana says that uh, you know one should not have. Um, a deity within the home which is nine angulas in height. So if you <laughs> nine, didn't have a deity which is bigger than between six to nine inches is the the kind of perm shastric permissible size of a deity within a home, for example. Oh, should but not be bigger. Yagya, should not be too big. Should not be too big in the home, right? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, the um that's the only thing that came to mind but uh whether or not they actually measured somebody's arani i am um, um i thought that measurement was um some called something else but you it's not coming right. i don't know um hastas are, are usually a measurement of oh is that a hasta Angulas and hastas are a measurement of thing. That's what I thought. And arani is the thing that you use to make fire before you start the fire in the yard. Arat oh, oh, what is aratni? Not aratni, but aratni. Maybe we have to look at that up in the Sanskrit dictionary. Yeah. I maybe. I don't know why that word came to mind. <laughs> okay, okay. I, don't know. <laughs> I thought it was a hasta. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, because it does mention even I think in Hari Bhakti Vilas that uh, the the idma um, the darvis which are known as, which we known as ayudas the spoons the sacrificial ladles if you like are also the set one hasta length or one pradesha is a stick that we we mention we we use as a, me a measurement but like I said you know. Um, yeah. I'm just looking it up. Aratni, a cubit of the middle length from the elbow to the tip of the little finger. Okay, well, there you go. I've, I've, I've learned something new today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that wasn't my point. <laughs> yeah. My my point was we we're trying to figure out what, what means 10 fingers or 12 fingers. And it just strikes me that that could be a, a kind of uh, sort of common way of saying that something is exceeding something else, exceeding the measurement in, units in a definite to a definite extent. You know, it goes yeah. ten fingers beyond. Okay, that yeah. means it's bigger. Okay, sorry, I, I didn't really know the answer, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
Oh gosh, the time is passing and here we are. We're not even reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. Shall we read a verse of Chaitanya Charitamrita? I see some nodding heads. Okay, let's first find it. Um, it's going to be here and it's going to be here, I think. Yes. Okay. Share. All right. Okay, we're still with this this uh, verse that in Bhaisava Kashmiri and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, critique of it. And he's giving here an, an explanation of what he had said in the previous verse to say why this is not a fault uh, to talk about um, water coming out of a lotus where it's usually the other way around. So, ambujam ambuni jatam kvachit api kvachit api na jatam ambujat ambu murabhidi tat viparitam Padam bojan mahanadi jata. Um, what sort? This doesn't seem like a, a metered verse, so it might be a commentary to something. Everyone knows that lotus flowers grow in the water, but water never grows from a lotus. All such contradictions, however, are wonderfully possible in Krishna. Huh? The great river Ganges has grown from his lotus feet. Yeah, we don't get a source for this, so it's um, curious. Gangara mahatva sadhya sadhana tahar vishnu pati anumana alankar The real glory of Mother Ganga is that she has grown from the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. Such a hypothesis is another ornament called anumana. <laughs> That's interesting. The word anumana is translated here as hypothesis. Um, anumana, of course, is one of the uh, pramanas, one of the ways of obtaining knowledge. And it's often translated as inference. Mm. So hypothesis, well, um, yeah, you could say like an inference. So the mahatva, the glory, and here we're getting a very Sanskritic uh, word, mahatva, is an abstract noun. Mahatva, the greatness of the Ganga, Gangara mahatva, Sadhya Sadhana Tahar. <clears throat> Sadhya Sadhana Tahar. Uh, the Mahatva of that. Um, Vishnu Pada Utpati, arising Utpati from the Pada, the feet of Vishnu. Anumana Alankara. Alankara means an ornament. And um, this is what poetry is all about, you could say. And of course, this is the subject of what's happening here is the, this um, pundit has, has, um, has spoken some poetry, um, but in Indian uh, tradition, Alankar Shastra, uh, there's elaborate and extensive uh, discussion about uh, what constitutes proper Alankara and what is improper. Uh, so there is this um, very, mm, how to say, very 
highly sophisticated tradition of Alankara Shastra. And that's what they're talking about here. And Mahaprabhu is saying this is an this this can be recognized to be an alankara, an ornament. What kind of ornament? It's an anuman ornament. It's a hypothesis ornament. <laughs> Why is it an, an hypothesis? Well, uh, the idea of after um, appearing from from uh, from a lotus is unusual, and so somehow this is being turned into uh, a form of is a form of reasoning. Um, but I'm not sure I get the sense here of sadhya and sadhana. Sadhana is that is the practice for obtaining the sadhya. Sadhya is the here's translated subject matter. But in the context of poetry, it may have some other sense, which I'm not aware of. Okay, stula e pancha dosha pancha alankar, sukshma bicharye jodi achaye opar. I have simply discussed the five gross faults, <laughs> stula, <laughs> uh, and five literary embellishments of this verse. But if we consider it in fine detail, we will find unlimited <laughs> faults. <laughs> Sukshma vicharye. So vichara means considering. Uh, so vicharye, in considering. Sukshma, what is subtle. Jadhi, if we would do this, then achaye apara. Apara means uh, without end, without limit, without. Um, yeah, without crossing, crossing over me. So that, <laughs> uh, he's just finished encouraging the pundit by saying, oh, there's five uh, good ornaments in your verse. That's nice. But, you know, this is all just on the gross level. Stula, uh, pancha dosha, stula pancha alankar. Sukshma vicharye, but if we would consider, you know, uh, the uh, the subtle aspects, then sorry, <laughs> then then there's so many problems with your verse. Uh, of course, we might want to wonder, well, well, what are those? But he's not going to tell us. Pratibha kovitta tomar devata prasade obichar kabye avasya pade dosha badhe. You have achieved poetic imagination and ingenuity, uh, which means something like cleverness, by the grace of your worshipable demigod, devata. But poetry, not well reviewed, is certainly subject to criticism. Hmm. Uh, okay, pratibha, translated here as ingenuity. We might want to say creativity. And kavitva is poeticness. It's again an abstract noun for kavi. <clears throat> Kavya. Uh, so by the prasada, by the mercy of uh, your devata, who is Saraswati, uh, by that mercy, 
yes, there's some pratibha and there's some kavitva. That's all very nice. However, avichar kavye avasya. No, avichar kavye. When there is not consideration, reflection, uh, in, in the poetry, then certainly avasya pade dosha badhe. Badhe, the obstruction of dosha, of fault. So this is going to make our pundits a bit unhappy. Uh, and of course, eventually he's going to, it's going to be revealed to him by Saraswati Devi, just who he's been speaking to. And that we will save for another time. All right. We're at that time again. I hope this was interesting and illuminating for you. My thanks to all of you translators. Um, and, oh, look, there's a big fire there at Smarahari. Where is he? Smarahari looks like he's... Oops, he just turned off. <laughs> no, turning back on. Mara. Huh? <laughs> He's in the campfire. I don't know. Okay. So I wish you all a wonderful week. Uh, keep safe. Keep sane. Keep well. Chant. Be happy. Remember the mantra in the mind and the mind in the mantra. That combination, samyukta, is japa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari Bo, Shila Brahma, Hari Bo, Nanta Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhaktar in the Ki Jai. Krishna, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. Chupa, Chupa, Chupa Guru. Thank you. Yeah, can I? Can I sign you? Ah. Okay.